Since there's so many cars that drive by, I just want to say hi, welcome back, and I'll just take you over to the bench where I can shut the door and you guys don't have to listen to cars. I just want to give everybody a bit of a heads up. Global Industrial, good company though. Um, bought, was looking around trying to find, just trying to cover up this. There, okay. Uh, I think everybody can see that. There's a whole set. Of the three eighths um, to, uh, insert holders, which is like the anytime tools, you know, it looked beautiful, and they're saying turning indexable tool bits, and for nine dollars and seventy cents. So I'm like excited, great. All right, I want two sets because I'm figuring rather than trying to machine down a half inch or anything like that to make my own, I just buy them. So. I was expecting to get two sets and nine seventy each, so ten ten bucks shipping, right? What was the shipping? Yeah, ten eighty seven. Like ouch. But this is what I got. Only two pieces. So they're showing the whole set, but the um, the ad or whatever you call it is just for one AR six, and it's it's pretty good quality. They're stamped India. But, and they do come with the screws, but the problem was the hole is drilled too far that way. So the screw doesn't go down into the center and capture it right. So this morning I called, because uh, this came Saturday, I called the, them at their 888 eight, eight number, 800 number, and got customer service and they said, uh, no big deal, sorry, it happened. Um, they're not worth sending them back, so just throw them in the trash can and I'll refund the full thirty dollars back to your credit card and it gave me a reference number so excellent company don't be afraid to buy from them. their customer service is really nice but don't buy these guys I don't know because ten bucks for one I'm back to I'm probably gonna go to Fastenal today and I get uh, get some steel 1018 here square that I can machine down rather than half inch they have another size it's just a fraction bigger than 3 8 so all I have to do is clean up the surfaces and then do my cut. So I'm going to be making a whole bunch of them myself now. Alright, we're back at the bench again one more time. Thought I'd just show this thing while I'm talking here. Uh, everybody's seen me rebuilding the dash for the 1975 Datsun 620. I'm still working on it and I decided um, I had tried to do the carpeting myself inside and it didn't really come out very well at all so um, it's moving and shifting so I started searching online and eBay I found uh, on eBay custom molded you know factory uh, carpeting so I ordered it but it blew me away because I'm reading a bunch of it and it's coming from AutoZone of all places and in the ad on eBay they specifically said at the bottom that if anything's wrong you don't like it take it to any AutoZone <laughs> store and they'll refund you so there's one right here so it's a couple of miles away so I ordered that yesterday I'm waiting to see what it's gonna be like it's some coffee color so because um, my BMW is green on the outside and it's tan on the inside so I figured the truck is green on the outside let's get close as I could get to tan with coffee so alright so that's enough of that um, next up if you're into electronics I know a lot of people are or you need a replacement part there's two places I go one is DigiKey and the other is Mauser. Here's, let me go wider than that, boy. There's the Mauser catalog, and I think you can see it's just a little bit thick. How many pages? Well, there's 2,000 there. So, just about anything you need. And I like doing the DigiKey uh, because you can go online. It's a giant, massive PDF, and you can search specifically for parts. So, um, with the TV set, if you'll remember that one video that I shot, they had the parts and stuff on eBay for it was like thirty dollars. I went on DigiKey and it was a dollar sixty-eight and a couple or a dollar two shipping. So 
And there's some other people that are thinking about Grizzly products. Here's their catalog. This is not a small company by any means. They have a lot of stuff that they offer. It lays up the yin yang mills, tools, motors. I and mean, this is like a granger here. So I just wanted people to realize when you're buying from them, you're not buying from a teeny company. You can, I think it was on their website, you can ask for a catalog. So if you guys want to get a nice hard copy, how many pages is this? You're 770. Um, so feel free to get the catalog, I guess, and go through it and whatever. That's why when I bought my mill there, they had so much money that I said, you know, I've got the chuck is uh, got too much run out. They said, no problem, I'll send you another one. Boof, gone. So I got another one. And what's up? I have to put the catalog back. Too many catalogs. Um, next up, I was looking before the belt that hooks on the lathe that gives the motor drive. That little tooth belt is called, it's a synchronous belt. And I was thinking about it going, well, what's everybody doing? So I watched, well, there's a bunch of videos. One, uh... One guy, what a practical renaissance or something like that, he tightened it and where he could push his finger and get his 16th deflection. The owner's manual for my lathe says you're supposed to get a quarter inch deflection. And um, I just posted on the website so you can go find it under general. There's a PDF that was sent to me by a guy in England. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Oh, I gotta shut it off. Truck coming. Sorry guys, Tuesday. It's garbage day. And he's gonna be here emptying cans like crazy. Uh, but like I was saying, there's a guy in England that sent me a PDF document uh, from a company over there. I never heard of the company. Go download this document. This is crazy. It shows in incredible detail with pictures how to completely take your mini lathe apart and how to put it back together but I was going through it and I got to the section section where they're saying tighten the belt tension and they're saying you must be able to twist it 90 degrees whoa that's really loose to me now I've said before I worked for Hughes Aircraft and I had to design servo control systems for a lot of XY tables and stuff and they all use that belt. That belt is synchronous. It's supposed to be tight and the reason is you know you don't want things shifting. If you want your table to go here and that belt slips you're off. So I was remembering the major company is called Gates. Gates manufactures all that stuff. They've been around forever and they actually make the timing belt that goes on your engine in the front for the overhead cam. So I went to Gates and found the equivalent to what we're using and it's a polychain carbon belt, synchronous, and downloaded their uh, application note, PDF. <laughs> I can zoom in on this, hopefully you guys can read it. Uh, which way? That way. Here's the note on um, tensioning. And the bottom line is when you go through it, they're taking everything into account the belt pitch, the belt width, belt size, sprocket. That's what I, I keep calling it a gear or pulley or whatever. It's a sprocket. So they take into account everything, but the bottom line is when you go through all the math, you have a number, and the number is tension. It's not loose. So these belts were designed and should be tight. Um, I've got mine, like I said, for a quarter inch. Seems like it's okay. But these, I don't know why they didn't use a V-belt in there, like um, the Mini Machine Shop's conversion for the uh, Mini Mill. Okay, <laughs> keep getting confused. Mini Mill's tight. Nice V, V-belt. They should have done that also on the lathe. So, if this one wears out, I'm probably going to consider machining my own pulleys and then find a Gates V-belt um, that'll fit. So, that's that on <laughs> belt tension. Um... What else is there? Okay, next next up, here's a, just when I think I'm running out of things to machine and I'm going to be bored, some, some idea pops into my head. You're probably wondering what this is. Um, I've always tried to figure out how, what can I do to make something for a spindle stop? 
or to hold the spindle on the lathe tight enough that I can tighten up the ER32 collet. And I was going to build something that goes on the outside, you know, the threads that are on the very back end of it, and have something like this threaded and go on there, but I didn't want to use a hole saw and make a hole in the, um, in the red plastic cover. So it occurred to me this morning, why don't you build something that goes inside of it? And it expands. So there it is. I just need to get the screw that goes all the way through. To make it, let me go a little wider here. To make it, this was put in the, um, in the, uh, the chuck, in the lathe. This was turned to size. And then I took it out and made sure, and yeah, I hit it right on. It's just within a few thousands. So then I drilled it out, bored it, and pulled it out. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't pull it out yet. So I bored it, so I had this end done, pulled it out a little further, and just finished the surface off, put a nice little bevel in here. Uh, sorry, jamfer. <laughs> and then took this around and turned this to height. This is a 5 eighths. Uh, Imperial. So, figured out, found a nut, got the dimensions that I needed, turned this down, put it in the spindex this way, did all the cutting, put it back into the lathe, give this a nice chamfer, drilled it all the way through, um, used um, an end mill to go down in there. I just had like Figured I'm going to use this, a 6-1 looks like a right good screw, so I've got all of that. I just need to go to fast and now I'll get the screw. So that, oh, and then, then this went back in the spindex and the slitting saw. Uh, and watching a long time ago, I remember Tom Limpton showing how to do the slitting saw and saying you have to do everything in one cut. I didn't want to do that. He's, he's saying because the chips don't clear, and I think he's right. <laughs> As you can see, it's all stuck on here. Does it come off? Oh yeah, it comes out, but wow. Look at that, jeez. So what I was, hey, that's gonna be a bit to get out. There it goes. So um, what I was doing, because I didn't really have the full depth it was gonna hit, I was off center, and I just drove it straight in and out. Turned it 90 degrees straight in and out. Oh, and I went back to the other side straight in and out. But when I was done with that, I had the t the cross on it, and I'm pushing, going, that's still stiff. So I started calculating where to put the other slots so that it all comes out even. And boy, once once you've done just this section, you try going in here, and it makes the highest frequency squeal I've ever heard. I had to plug my ears while I was cranking it in, but it came out pretty nice. Um, so that's what it is. It just slides in the very back. I don't have to modify the red cover. I can put a wrench on it. Wrench fits pretty good. This is 5 eighths, right? Yeah. I got it right on the money. So I can use a wrench to hold it and tighten the R32 chuck or whatever. I can also use this or uh, a 12, 12 point socket with the ratchet on it and I can do threading if I need to. I just gotta see, I'm hoping that this hangs on really tight in there. Oh, and to do this, this went into a V-block in the mill and found dead center and I went straight down with a 60 degree dovetail and it did a pretty good job. It, it finishes really nice. I had to go real slow but I had a couple of thousands at a time, I got it. And this guy, this was made this way in the lathe, stock in there. Simply drill it out, tap it, chamfer it, face it, clean this edge up. Took it over, hacksawed it off, and then I didn't want to put the ER32 chuck in there, so I put it in here, a nut and a washer, and just stuck it in the chuck and clamped down on the nut. And, whoops, it was the other way around, Dave was this way and then faced it off and just gave it a nice chamfer so this should work I'm just hoping it clamps real hard I'm not worried about fatigue or breaking or anything because it's pretty much going to stay in the lathe once I put it in there I can crank down on it really hard 
with an Allen and I picked this because I didn't want to have another Allen in my drawer. I don't need more tools <laughs> eating up room. So I'm going to crank this down really hard and then test it and see if it holds. If it doesn't hold then I'm going to have to do something here. Uh, angle it slightly, something to get more surface area contact. But I think it's going to do it because this is soft and this should dig in or flatten out and stuff. But that's the little guy. Just slide it in there, crank that down and leave it in there. Alright, just ideas for you guys. Show you guys some slitting saw work here, making this little guy. All right. Basically, I'm just going straight in. And that's it. Rotate it and do the uh, do the 90 here. So pretty easy. <laughs>